आम जिंदगी वे ईच ऑफ एस आर डेस्परेटली वेटिंग फॉर द मेंटोर जिंदगी टू बिगिन आफ्टर द लॉकडाउन यू नो आई I'm I'm taking the creative liberty here simply because I have a panel of leaders from the creative industry today and we are all here to talk about solidarity in the face of adversity. I'm Neeta Nair, assistant editor of Impact magazine. You cannot see me but you can hear me I hope. And uh, I have with me uh, Tarun Rai, chairman and group CEO Wonderman Thompson South Asia. Hi Tarun. Hi. I have Rohit Ori, chairman and CEO of FCB India. Uh, Agnello oh. Dias, creative chairman of Dan, and also CEO and co-founder of Tapu Densu. And do we also have Hemant here? Hemant with us? Mm. No, we don't have him. At least we can't see him. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So let's let's start with the discussion. Hoping he can join us somewhere in the middle. You know, as as we speak, uh, you know, each of your agencies is probably finding new ways to create magic in isolation. You know, Mr. Hmm. Rai, let me direct my first question at you. Uh, you know, Wonderman Thompson is one of the first agencies to come up with video ads made from home. You know, as hmm. soon as the lockdown was literally you know, announced, you know, yeah. be it Tata Pravesh or Mankind Pharma, were you hmm. yourself surprised when the agency literally came up with an ad in less than four days? You know, when generally it takes more than a month at least to you know come up with a video ad per se. Uh, I mean, a you are absolutely right. Uh, I think we had a little bit of uh, an advantage because we started working from home uh, maybe around uh, four or five days before uh, uh, everyone went into a lockdown. Uh, mm -hmm. But we, we had already decided that it is too unsafe to to really uh, be in office, so we were already working from home. But you are right. I was actually very very uh, surprised at the way we completely. Uh, took to working from home. Uh, mm -hmm. All the tools existed for us, but uh, nobody was obviously using them as frequently as they they could. And um, it was uh, it was amazing how seamless it was. I think we declared uh, working from home on a sink on Monday, which was around 16th of March or something. And when I went to office on the 17th, 80% uh, of our people were from working from home. And uh, by the seven, by the eighteenth, I think hundred percent were. So I was actually quite amazed. And and this is one thing that I find uh, in this entire uh, lockdown scenario. I think in terms of adoption of uh, digital technology, I think we have compressed uh, maybe two years uh, of adoption into two weeks. Uh, so mm -hmm. yes, I was very pleasantly surprised as to how quickly uh, uh, we all adapted to working from home. And I actually think that this uh, the speed has been uh, fantastic. So we were ready for it. Uh, but we were just not uh, had enough motivation uh, to be actually uh, uh, adopting this uh, technology, and it's uh, it's really spectacular. And so much so now that you mention it, so much so that now we are actually uh, uh, innovative enough to uh, uh, shoot four uh, proper television commercials. And I'll talk about that later when you talk about production. But yes, it's been an amazing uh, uh, speed with which we have adopted uh, the new way of working. You know, Aggie, something similar holds for you. I think the Vivo ad was made in less than a week's time. Now, you know, did you feel that you know all the agencies under the Dentsu umbrella at that point when the lockdown was announced had the wherewithal to literally work, not just work from home but also deliver in record time? And what kind of preparation went into creating that kind of a setup for your team, Aggie? Huh? Uh, I uh, I have a slightly. Uh, uh, different view from Tarun's on the process. I think uh, when, when a catastrophe of this kind happens, the immediate mm -hmm. first phase, which we are going through now, will be uh, the great relief that you can produce something sitting uh, in, a, in a report in, in remote locations. Mm -hmm. I think the greater, the, the greater uh, badge of honor is the fact that you could produce a film without having met people but mm -hmm. i think that phase will soon pass and the process will no longer be the hero and clients and everybody should start looking at now producing good ads whether sitting at home or not not just producing an ad uh, because mm -hmm. while this is a great uh, demonstration of our spirit to able to pull something off collectively as an industry including wonder man and i'm sure even fcb uh, it is by no way an ideal situation for a creative because if you eliminate the the circumstances under which the ad was created, 
we would still have to stand up and be measured against what we normally call a good standard of advertising and that will be what uh, eventually everybody will look for in the in the next phase once the, the thrill of having produced something without having met at all uh, passes we still have to evaluate the ad for an ad sake because eventually consumers are not going to buy into something because of the mitigating circumstances circumstances under which you created it they are just going to buy what they see and that should stand up to what we used to do as an industry in the past but it is a good first step to show that we can do something now we probably have to move to a stage where we can do that something under these circumstances as good as we used to do it before hi guys hello hi iman hi 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 hey, i got just, it just in time iman yeah so we have with us iman stringy cco bbdo mumbai hi hi guys iman we were just discussed <laughs> we were just discussing the problem you know that uh, agencies face with the lockdown you know mm. i was just coming to the fact that you know there is this there was a small thing that you know production houses were not really accepting work mm. and for multiple reasons and you know, the onus literally fell on the agencies to create work end to end for the client now do all agencies have an in house production house which can actually take care of such an eventuality how was it for you guys i mean it it did become like that maybe we didn't have it but or maybe we didn't know it but eventually turns out we do <laughs> okay A- anything interesting that came out of bbdo that way or the uh, something that you're working on i think there's something that are that are coming up mm-hmm. and uh, yeah we did find out a lot of hidden talents from within the agency whether it was editing or voice over or acting so so yeah i think i think uh, there's a lot of interesting thing coming up yeah and we are having a lot of fun actually in 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 a way because we are discovering you know there's there's a little bit of discovery that's happening in the process and it's quite exciting in its own way okay you know rohit let me bring you in here you know from what i have seen you know you've not really been very big on work from home ads per se but you know as soon as the lockdown was announced uh, you announced partnerships with xp and d where you launched a virtual experience platform for uh, brands and a few hours ago even with the uh, network pay now tell me are you looking at the lockdown period in the non traditional way you know where you are literally moving away from uh, video ads but you know instead focusing on creating solutions for the clients so you know it's not about moving away from uh, a particular media to another media what we are saying is that you know the big question before everybody now is what is the recovery phase going to look like what is post covid era uh, what's the shape that it's going to take and you know we've been talking about this it's that uh, the virus is not going to go away right so it's not that uh, the on the 4th of may we are going to all rush out of our homes to our offices and to the malls and to uh, movie halls and and life will come back to normal right so that's not the case so if that's really not going to be the case what is the new normal of behavior going to be like right mm-hmm. and uh, that's what we are getting ready for so uh, xpnd uh, really helps us look at um, you know offline experiences online and we we've, we've done a fair degree of work already we've done this big uh, sangeet setu concert uh where we had almost uh, 51 singers come together um and it was was a seamless concert over three days anchored by akshay kumar so that was one piece what we launched today was our partnership with network bay to look at retail and see what's the new normal and that's why it's called retail day 1 where what we are saying is that in the new world there is going to be a fair degree of play of social distancing right so if social distancing is something that is going to carry on what's the impact of that on retail what would uh, consumers expect when they go into a retail outlet what what's the shape and size um and the form that uh, uh, you know retail outlets will take so understanding that and really uh building capabilities behind that is really what we were looking at and that's an interesting point let me bring bounces off everyone here you know what is uh, what is your opinion aki is it more important to provide solutions to clients at this point as opposed to doing video ads or maybe also doing video ads but more important to focus on the solutions other over and above that see i think uh, traditionally uh, traditionally creativity in advertising was 
built on the two founding evaluative para parameters of affinity and behavior behavior loosely translated as sales and affinity that translated to behavior which means people put money out to buy a product was the complete package that advertising brought to the table without mm -hmm. uh, without the without the behavior box being ticked off uh, creating affinity for creative was something that uh, maybe uh, even any content house or any production house or any movie studio could create but what uh, advertising brought to the table was affinity that actually made people behave in a certain way or put their money in a certain place mm -hmm. i i feel personally over the last few years the accent or the focus on affinity had grown far too large and to a certain extent behavior or public sales was not something that marketers and uh, advertising agencies were as concerned about as affinity and this was driven by a lot of visible demonstration of affinity on the internet and therefore that visibility of likes and uh, you know popularity tended to become uh, far more important than uh, eventual change in behavior but now since brands are uh, and and products are affected at their core which is moving off the shelves in the marketplace i i think there would be from a marketer's point of view in the short term an uh, immediate uh, transfer of their attention to actual affinity driving uh, creative or you know uh, behavior driving creative creative from affinity uh, unlike say in the immediate pre covid phase when it was largely about you know publicity uh and if behavior comes along with it that's fine if not uh, let's move on but i think they will now look at actual delivery sales in the marketplace because if they if they don't look at that if we don't look at that there will be no money to pay for affinity building creative and it will have to be far more hard driven in that man so the advertising agency's role now will in a way switch back to maybe a few years back when there were enough uh, there was enough intellectual uh, knowledge within the agency to actually uh, provide solutions for clients sales problems rather than their popularity problems or fame problems okay before we move on let me ask all of all the people who are watching us to please tweet on e forum webinar also you can ask us questions here we'll try to take up some of them uh, moving on uh, you know like you were saying uh, tarun uh, you know yeah. is because there's no way to complete the purchase cycle right now what are the unique solutions you are offering to your clients right now what are the suggestions see the the point is that uh, uh, the question is not if we are going to lick uh, this virus the question is when uh, but mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is that right now uh, this particular situation even though we have seen a uh, crisis before even 2008 was a global crisis but we haven't seen a crisis uh, of this uh, scale uh and in terms of uh, just the speed at which it's uh, come upon us and the other thing about this crisis is the complete uncertainty uh, even today sitting in mumbai we don't know what's going to happen post 3rd of may uh, so for our clients uh, uh, the situation is uh, uh, is almost looking at uh, things uh, with a twin lens uh, one is the short term and the other is the long term uh, one is the period uh, through the crisis and we have to help them manage it and the other is uh, the bounce back Uh, in every sector and some sectors have been uh, affected uh, uh, far worse than other sectors but every sector all the companies are affected uh, but the momentum of the or the velocity of the bounce back is going to what's going to differentiate one company uh, uh, from the other currently uh, and that's why we are working with uh, all our clients and we are uh, working with tools uh, which are scenario planning tools uh, because uh, you can't say for sure a when the uh, uh, this crisis is going to get over and secondly what the new normals are going to be uh, when it does get over so if you don't have a scenario planning tool it's going to be very difficult uh, for you to actually uh, uh, be ready for uh, uh, the velocity bounce back that is going to differentiate you from the others so we are very engaged with our clients and mm -hmm. uh, and i actually think that uh, uh, scenario building and using tools to build scenarios is absolutely important and also to advise clients during this period about how to communicate everyone knows that in the short run 
marketing spends are going to be a challenge they are a challenge uh, when production is even for fmcg companies when production is on only at 40% it's going to be difficult uh, some of our clients were into retail uh, and aviation and hospitality their revenues have uh, fallen as much as uh, 90% so therefore there is tightness uh, but we know that uh, once this uh, this crisis is over the brands who have actually uh, added value to the consumers life through the crisis because we must remember that while brands and companies are challenged so are consumers and if during a crisis period the brands who have added value who have kept communicating who have partnered the consumers they are going to benefit and they are going to to my mind benefit uh, in terms of gaining market share so we are constantly in touch with our clients again looking at things with a twin lens one the short term and the other is the long term and in the long term building scenarios to figure out what the new normals are going to be there are some of the clients i think also changing their business models completely like i think Good zomato thing. not just introduced uh, contactless uh, deliveries they are also starting with contactless dining same with swiggy they just don't deliver food anymore they also they are your personal courier guys i mean they have something called genie swiggy genie which delivers absolutely everything so that's interesting i mean even brands and agencies are supporting them to do this uh, take this forward in some yeah way. you are right in you know, in, uh, in another market sorry to uh, to interrupt but i'm just adding to your point in another mm-hmm. market a, a very big international airline is actually using their catering service Uh, to partner with uh, uh, people like Zomato and Amazon to deliver food uh, at home to people. So you are right. Uh, people are looking at how they can actually adapt and innovate uh, through this crisis. Absolutely. Think, you know, as, far, as, far as, far as, the, as far as the advertising industry is concerned, uh, I think even Rohit uh, briefly mentioned it, and so did Tarun. it is difficult for us to formulate a strategy till we know the definiteness and the permanence of the problem so mm-hmm. for example if it is going to be a lockdown forever then the production industry and the advertising industry can actually start working on a infrastructure or structure or a model that works in this scenario but mm-hmm. till it settles down we say okay it's not going to be for ever but it's going to be 40% this way should we build studios with a sanitation room where everybody gets sanitized when they enter and leave in the evening it's it's no point building permanent structures of new methods of operating right now when we don't know the definite the definiteness of the problem that lies ahead so at some point in the next two or three weeks there may be more clarity on exactly how the, much the world has changed and for how long and whether it's forever and then i think uh, it will be fair to look at what new modes of operating uh, we create but till then what we are doing is uh, probably in a in a way you could say survival within within the given fluid moving goal post that exist out there and uh, i think all agencies are doing a good job of it but if you are seeking an answer to a question of whether there will be a change in operating procedure business models in the future mm-hmm. it, it will only be formed up once we have a firming up of the extent and the permanence of the scars that the crisis has left on us okay and i'd like to come to rohit and uh, himant you know uh, salary cuts have started across across uh, sectors how is the advertising agency coping on that are you looking at salary cuts and even layoffs for that matter for your uh, employees I mean, at your respective agencies so do you want me to go first himant yes. yeah sure yes please so uh, you know uh, i was listening to martin sorel uh, 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 <laughs> kind of i think last week and i heard him say that uh, people are most important and companies especially advertising agencies where you know one of the things i keep talking about and i think i mentioned that to you nita we are the only industry where our factories are working right all mm-hmm. the factories are working uh, we are producing uh, at a rapid pace uh, pace for all our clients so we don't have the lockdown because you know ideas don't need to be locked down ideas can can uh, you know are free really and and uh, what we are saying is in this context uh, uh, what martin was actually talking about was that um, you know people are the most important thing and if if a agency has to come back on its feet quickly you need to kind of uh, remember that you need the people right to make that happen you need the good people to make it happen so my point of view on that is um, 
you know, at this point in time, there's an enormous amount of emotional and uh, stress that all our employees are going through. Right. So the idea is that at this point, the most important thing is to reassure them. And one of the things that I'm doing all the time is we have a daily communication with them. I'm doing town halls every week with the entire um, set of people working with us to reassure them about what is the most important thing for us. And the fact that people and it's times like these where organizations need to stand up and stand behind their employees. So uh, that's what we're doing. Obviously, you're not blind to the fact that there is going to be a dip in uh, revenues and, and we need to watch behind that. And so obviously, the, uh, there are, we've curtailed expenses, right? So the, the whole thing is to find ways that we could cut all, all expenses, all discretionary spends, etc. at the first pass. And then, uh, you know, uh, depending on how this actually pans out, what happens? Uh, does this open in in May? Is, uh, and and there is a semblance of return to normalcy. That's when uh, I think we'll we'll take a call on uh, what needs to be done beyond that. But right now, I think um, we we are standing by uh, and not cutting salaries or uh, you know doing any kind of retrenchment at this point. Okay, Imant, yeah. uh, what do you think? You know, though agencies are dishing out great work. I'm sure the, the, the fear of an impending recession is get, getting to us all. So how are you keeping your team in order and together? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, uh, you know, what Rohit was saying, the fact that we are in a way a people first business, right? Uh, our, our people are our resources, our people are, our, uh, you know, what, what keep it going. And at the same time, like, you know, at the beginning of the conversation, we discussed that uh, this time is actually giving an opportunity for all of us and all of our people as well um, to sort of do more. I mean, you know, the people are doubling up in a way people are uh, sort of offering more value, adding more value um, because we know that there are a lot of outside factors that, you know, can't be uh, worked out right now. And people from within the agency are, are doing more than they were earlier. And uh, it's absolutely important for us to keep uh, the morale of, uh, the people going and I feel like Rohit was saying, you know, are in a way far more in touch than we were earlier. We are having far more conversations than we did earlier. And uh, yeah, I think, I think we are all focused at, you know, making this work. And as of now, it doesn't look as bad. And, uh, you know, we're just hoping for it to get better. Rohit, if I may ask you, uh, you know, we have a late Diwali this year. Do you see advertising coming back with a bang, you know, after the lockdown is lifted in the latter months of the year? Or do you think clients will be that much more cautious about spending henceforth, at least in this one year? Uh, I don't think we've lost Rohit. Tarun, would you like to take that? Yes, I'll I'll take yeah, it. And uh, to my mind, uh, to my mind, uh, the uh, the silver lining uh, of this terrible tragedy, uh, from the business point of view, is that uh, uh, the second half of the year is actually a more important year for uh, for sales. It's the festival season, like you said, Diwali. Um, we don't know. Again, as I said, the difference between this crisis and all the other crises was uh, the uncertainty. We do not know how things are going to pan out. Uh, but if, and as I said, you know, there is discussion about uh, V-shaped recovery versus U-shaped recovery and how broad the U is going to be. Uh, but I'm still hopeful. I mean, there's no no other option but to be optimistic and hopeful. And and I do think if you see whatever uh, news we are getting from uh, the European markets, uh, as soon as the lockdown is relaxed, people are expecting uh, the economy to bounce back uh, rather quickly. Um, I was also uh, watching news and we, are talk, uh, we have some auto clients and two-wheeler clients and uh, their expectation is that there is going to be a pent-up demand and it is going to uh, bounce back uh, pretty soon. So I am hopeful. Again, we don't know. I am hopeful that uh, uh, by the time Diwali comes around, uh, the situation would be much better and the uh, clients would be therefore uh, more bullish about uh, achieving their, uh, their uh, season and festival targets. Uh, so I do expect uh, a bounce back to happen in the second half of the year. As I said, uh, it's a question of uh, living with uncertainty. 
uh, and we just have to build scenarios and keep planning for it. But uh, on the face of it, and from whatever we are seeing uh, in Europe, um, and even in China and South Korea, uh, our offices in China are uh, uh, in Beijing, it's some 60-65% all back in office. In Shanghai, it's 100%. South Korea is getting to 100%. So uh, from the example of Southeast Asia and more recently Europe, it seems to be that the bounce back is going to be a, a pretty good bounce back. And uh, I think the client should be spending at that time. Aggie, you wanted to add that I saw. I, yeah. I think, uh, first of all, uh, salary cuts or, you know, not having increments is not the first time ever for the industry. The, most industries have over the years and most agencies have had to tweak a working model where you don't take increments in a particular area or maybe you take any. So it's not that agencies have never done it before. Uh, and it's, it's a, you know, it's a catastrophic kind of decision. It, it's been done in the past. And if it needs to be done now, it will be done now. It's, I think there's no harm in it. But I think emotionally for the young brigade, especially coming through in creative, one silver lining I see attitudinally in what has happened is that I, I feel that there will be a rise in some amount of vocational respect to the job you do. Because uh, there was, to a certain extent, a bit of uh, irrational flirting with the vocation you choose or the job you do because this let's try something else, let's try something else all the time had resulted in uh, in a erosion of the depth in the craft that we pursue. Mm -hmm. And I think with uh, and everything became a transient, flirtatious kind of uh, approach to uh, work vocation, careers, uh, and it had reached a pretty high level before. I'm hoping that uh, now that there will be some kind of emotional uh, emotional kind of sh shock, there will be an increased respect of sticking to what you've chosen to do, doing it well, uh, loyalty to your vocation, to your company, to your industry, and seeing it out, the, uh, seeing it out in a manner that makes you practice it well rather than keep trying new things all the time. So that I hope uh, is is the positive that uh, most of our young talent in the industry uh, should feel and bring to the table, which which I felt was a bit of a problem uh, in the pre-COVID. I think we'll always now discuss this thing in the pre-COVID era versus the post-COVID era, just like partition of the war. We wait for the post-COVID era. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of our viewers has asked this question. You know, currently the advertising is skewed to digital and uh, TV only. You no know, other mediums are pretty much facing the heat. Do you think uh, COVID will change the way marketers think about media? This is uh, from Manish Kukreja. So, you know, uh, one Raymond, of the things, like uh, Nika, what I, oh, I we felt, are really back. Yes. So I felt, uh, you know, I think the print medium actually is, uh, had a golden opportunity, which they missed quite unfortunately. Because mm -hmm. it was a fantastic opportunity to recast what the the medium actually delivered, and I think unfortunately what we've seen is that you know even though uh, newspapers don't come home anymore, but uh, they are online versions, and the online versions replicate the offline versions, and it is so difficult to read that uh, you you really wonder as to why nobody has thought of uh, you know a new format where uh, it is easy to read a quick, uh, complete redesign of, of uh, newspapers, which, which kind of enables that. Because you can't expect that in the new world and in a new mobile first, uh, you are still going to be, uh, you know, uh, sending out the old format newspapers, right? So that I think is an opportunity missed. And, you know, it is something that uh, the print medium is going to look back and wonder why why they didn't do that. Okay. And before that, let me just uh, let me just make this small announcement. Tomorrow we have the Bridge Brand Talk virtual series at three thirty. We will be where we will be speaking to Mr. Tarun Arora, CEO of Zydus Wellness. Please join us back then. And uh, coming back, uh, uh, Hemant, uh, yeah. I would like to know. You know, are our clients really cutting uh, agency costs today, along with you know ad cutting down on advertising spends? You know, I would want to believe that agencies are that much more important for brands 
at this point in time to navigate through the crisis but do they think otherwise are they cutting down agency costs no i think again you know because we are speaking on the uh, topic of solidarity in a way i think mm-hmm. what has been interesting in a time like this is solidarity of every kind right so you know that uh, certain clients are understanding what the agency would be going through and are being considerate of that um agencies are being considerate of the fact that what the client must be going through and reacting accordingly um whether it is uh, you know it could be whether it could be offering a reduced cost or whether it could be offering uh, extra work that they can do at a time like this uh, but i feel that again what's been amazing is that you know usually solidarity is something that you get together and sort of plan on something versus in a time like this i mean at least at least i've noticed the solidarity has been far more instinctive in that way mm-hmm. whether it is agencies understanding the clients or clients understanding the agency so i think um that is something that's pretty fortunate and it's is are it's you really saying the clients are you saying the clients are less of dictators right now <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> no i think uh, i think he's right and he say when you say agencies will renegotiate costs it's not as is conventionally thought because because they lose respect for the kind of work you do or they lose respect for the role you play but it's more because of, from a spirit of all shoulders to the wheel we are all, all in this together so everybody contributes in some manner to tighten the belts and you know pull pull us through but not because they value the role of advertising or creative any less uh, but more more because uh, almost every department is reducing costs so not not just advertising but so would you say, but our which is happening right now i mean our clients actually choosing to jump boats at this point? well we uh, maybe i can't say it now but we just one hour back one, an hour back got a new account but it's largely a, uh, clients actually who didn't have a permanent agency but i have not heard of uh, maybe it is there but i have not heard of somebody s- seeking to switch mm-hmm. an agency in these times because if i just put myself in the client shoes it would be uh, quite an ordeal to orient a new agency into your brand in, in this period yeah but if i if i may add uh, aggie is right uh, but uh, surprisingly there are six pitches lined up between now and the uh, end of the month uh, but these are uh, i think largely pitches that were uh, initiated before uh, the lockdown and uh, what we are hearing is though it's not an ideal situation but the reason uh, at least some of these pitches are going ahead is because they don't uh, they are not sure when the lockdown is getting over so they are saying at least let's go through with it even though it's not ideal uh, but uh, there are uh, i mean i'm surprised also uh, that there are uh, so many pitches uh, a few are certainly than earlier but there mm-hmm. are still pitches that are uh, that we are participating in and uh, as i said uh, there are six uh, uh, pretty big pitches uh, between now and the and the end of the month so i think also what's happening is that the clients also have taken to working from home Uh, and while in a in a pitch situation you do miss the body language as you're presenting you you do miss the immediate feedback because your presentation slide is up there uh, there is a lack of chemistry because uh, it's difficult to have chemistry over uh, a zoom or a, a microsoft teams call uh, but mm-hmm. still i think uh, it's uh, work is going on and i think largely uh, because clients are not sure whether 3rd of may in mumbai or uh, in new delhi is going to be the end of the lockdown so they don't want to uh, postpone things uh, indefinitely you know i i asked yeah and i honestly think that you know, oh, yeah <laughs> i honestly on. so yeah. i'm going please go on I'll, i'll yeah i was saying i honestly believe that you know we will probably come out of this lockdown with a stronger client agency relationships i i think that may happen i'm i'm quite certain of that but he- Even the simple the simple reason why I asked this was I remember before just when the lockdown happened there was this post by Pratap Suthan uh, CCO of Bank in the Middle where he said you know he will not take on any agency any account wherein the agency uh, when the brand is moving simply because the agency is not being able to deliver uh, during because of the current situation and everybody I think a lot of creative heads and uh, went and hit like and, and you know said you know we should do this this is the way we should be together. cut to two weeks later like tarun said there are like six pitches happening and also there are new pitches initiated perhaps where one industry leader told me that there were 20 agencies participating for one account 
so is all this solidarity just for a matter of talking you know when we we are in such forums or is it just a matter of survival at the end of it end of the day uh neeta it the, as i said these are pitches that were in, initiated mm -hmm. uh, before uh, uh, the the covid crisis and the lockdown and the reason mm -hmm. they are going ahead with it is because they <laughs> they are they are not sure uh, when mm -hmm. the lockdown is going to get over i don't think and i this is what agi pointed out uh, mm -hmm. unless uh, you are aware of some pitches i don't think uh, people and clients are initiating a new pitch uh, in the mm -hmm. last months so these are uh, pitches that uh, that were initiated before beforehand and they postponed it uh, hoping that uh, two weeks or uh, three weeks is going to be the lockdown once it got extended they're saying okay let's get on with life so so there is a difference unless uh, you have heard something uh, i've heard uh, about some thing but i don't want to disclose it at this point so <laughs> a new place that's that your exclusive so. right neeta <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's for later or in in some cases uh, like we've had a few pitches which have started after the lockdown but they didn't have an agency so i think yeah. they are advancing their plans to go go to market much faster now uh, and looking for an agency which they didn't have so uh, i it would be i, I mean i <laughs> if i would struggle to actually live in a be in a company and say let's get a new agency in let's dump the old agency in this period and now let's orient the new agency into the brand it's it's the worst orientation you can have yeah. absolutely you know and, and another thing that i just wanted to ask is uh, you know ads of course are important even in, in just just for the sake of engagement with clients and but the problem is there have been too many manifestations of uh, work from home start something new from home like literally 30 brands are chasing the same line of thought now crowdsourcing is also becoming like quite popular it's a new formula are, are viewers going to get bored of this after a point so what is next for the agencies after crowdsourcing how are you going to go forward is it going to be animation or how um, can i can i take this uh, uh, yes, which yes, is what please. i was saying i was saying earlier that uh, uh, you know uh what has surprised me is the is the uh, the innovation and the and the ability of uh, the creative agencies and uh, while i know about uh, my agency i'm sure there are examples at fcb and uh, uh, and densu and so with bbdo where fair people are uh, uh, are so resourceful and uh, uh, innovative that we have actually shot four tvcs uh, in mumbai uh, and th these were shot in the in the director's home Uh, with a cast from his building, uh, maintaining social distance, uh, distancing, and everything, and the creative director is actually watching the entire shoot on Microsoft Teams and mm -hmm. doing it live. And uh, and these are TVCs because uh, here uh, these are clients uh, who are in the FMCG sector. Uh, their product is relevant to uh, the situation which we are going through today. Uh, and as I said, uh, there is a short term and then there is a long term and. Uh, if there is a long term and there is a medium term uh, you can't indefinitely postpone your strategic plans uh, because you don't know how long the short term is going to be so the clients are going ahead and i think uh, this animation and using stock footage and using photographs <coughs> with uh, with uh, backup tracks i think is going to lead to and i think uh, agi mentioned it uh, that you know as an industry we will uh, we will recalibrate and we will uh, get into a different model where we can actually even produce and shoot and it's beginning to happen and uh, and as i said uh, i believe the shoot has gone off very well and there are four films shot over 3 uh, uh, days uh, in uh, two residential complexes and uh, uh, with a star cast of uh, people from uh, that society and uh, let's see how it comes out but i believe it's gone off well You know, in fact, the other thing, Nita, is that for uh, us, the, the the really interesting piece, and quite honestly, I I didn't didn't expect a reaction like this. But when um, uh, Doordarshan brought back uh, Mahabharat and Ramayan, uh, we uh, you know actually <laughs> went back in in time and picked out all Amul ads from that period. We ran some forty six of the old ads again. Mm -hmm. right and uh, it was just incredible because everybody said it was fantastic it was we recreated the same ads that ran at that period of time so so that worked really well as well because you know you were harking back at something it was nostalgia and i you know in many ways i think brands that uh, bring back a lot of the the trust and the the the, the fact that they've been with uh, 
the people of india you know for for the longest amul had this whole um, the 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 line which is amul doot peeta hai india mm-hmm. and uh, the fact of the truth of the matter is today uh, when you go to a retail outlet and uh, we we have one in our building and i go there the only milk that is available is amul right so at that point in time you truly feel i mean and i and i react to it as a consumer not as you know uh, there are clients and and you know i work in an advertising agency and i think uh, aggie mentioned that or i don't know whether tarun did but the fact is that you know if a brand is there for its uh, consumers at this point in time you remember that 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 you will definitely remember when you come out of this crisis because uh you know it it changes your relationship with that brand because you know uh, what happened to the other global multinational uh, brands and milk is milk is an essential commodity but it's not available so so that that kind of actually triggers a new relationship uh, a new connection and you know obviously uh, you know when the brand comes out of the crisis they will have it will have a whole new set of consumers as well yeah and also neeta to add to that i feel that uh, all of us know the limitations that we have with production at a time like this including not just the client but even the viewers uh, and i feel in a time like this what will stand out is not the piece of advertising that uh, the brand is doing but actually the message uh, that is behind that execution as well so it's you know the message is going to play a very strong role along with the execution of it So before we close down the discussion, let me ask for one learning from the lockdown from each. Of you. Nita, I think Aggie you know, wanted to say something. Like... Aggie, no, no, uh, I'm sorry. The same thing to go back to your question. Mm-hmm. Uh, this immediate first phase where the process is the big hero uh, will pass, and uh, rather than say you know given the circumstances, it's a good ad. We'll have to move on to it's a good ad period, not given right. the circumstances. And uh, sooner or later, like you yourself said. Uh, every ad will be shot remotely and under lockdown then eventually it will still be the better ad that prevails even today i think for client were given a choice to say given a decent ad shot under lockdown versus a brilliant ad shot without lockdown when you choose he will choose the latter so it's a transient phase where we are learning to operate within uh, within a whole lot of constraints but eventually that will pass and we will have to move to saying okay the novelty of you having shot it in such mm-hmm. difficult circumstances is done because now everybody is shooting it in difficult circumstances now which is the better ad so it will come yeah. back to it will come back to that currently a lot of the work is enjoying the spotlight because it is impossible to have any ad out forget about an uh, ad shot under lockdown so that's that's the first step but it will move to the next stage absolutely uh, can i can i have one learning from the lockdown from each of you before we close the discussion Aggie, can we start with you? One learning from the lockdown. Uh, I think uh, my uh, point that I made earlier, which is the importance of behavior as equal to affinity for a brand, is uh, shows now because the brands that are doing well are brands that had not lost uh, sight of building behavior along with affinity, and the brands that have quickly vanished. Uh, at the first hint of trouble are brands that had only worked uh, on affinity for affinity sake without building behavior tarun okay. uh, yeah well uh, to me as i said uh, uh, the thing that um, completely took my by surprise was uh, how efficiently we can work from home and while it is not ideal uh, you miss the the energy and production is a is a problem and the buzz uh, and the social interaction and i know that uh, as the lockdown continues uh, working from home uh, will lead to fatigue uh, but i still i still feel that it will be a uh, it'll be terrible if we don't at least take this learning of working from home and take it into a post covid situation where at least uh, 50% uh, of the solution uh, can be working from home i would love it if we can implement uh, on any given day Uh, mm-hmm. a 50% uh, uh, staff which works from office and 50% which works from home uh, i mean imagine the uh, uh, the infrastructure of the city 
the air quality pollution levels uh, uh, waiting for the elevator in our uh, new building in mumbai everything will get sorted out and i think it's eminently workable uh, we talked about flexibility earlier and uh, and i think uh, uh, the digital adoption as i said uh, two years of digital adoption is now compressed into two weeks so we should learn from it and at least uh, strive uh, as an industry maybe because we are a knowledge based industry uh, to at least have 50% people on any given day working from home so to me that's one learning we should take forward yeah maybe offices will just be meeting rooms really i think so <laughs> and a pool table lagi <laughs> <laughs> hey man what do you think i think one of the learning has definitely been uh, you know i mean it it's a realization in a way almost that it's the first time when we've said uh, hope everything's well with you and it was not a formality but it was uh, a genuine question and uh, we're really you know far more compassionate and considerate towards each other in a time like this uh, be it among be it in our life be it at work be it with our employees be it with our clients and um, i just hope you know we've always uh, thought of compassion being too much of a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, hard work where you say oh you know we are we are doing so much there's so much to do i don't have the time to sit and do formalities and do small talk anymore uh but you know you genuinely want to know how the other person is doing at at a point like this and you really care for that and i think that's a great learning and i hope uh that is something that we can continue even after we come out of this and last few words from you rohit so you know for me uh like what tarun said i think that you know I, i wanted to just talk about two things one is that you know work from home of course has been a has been a, a miraculous learning i mean it it's it's just completely opened my eyes and quite honestly i was quite skeptic about it so when we and we went into uh, work from home about a week uh, uh, before the lockdown was announced and um, i i did mention to hr i said you know um, i'm not, i'm not certain this is going to work we have such a young uh, uh you know uh, workforce and i actually called everybody and we did a town hall and i said hey guys this is work from home it's not a holiday right <laughs> so you can't kind of pack your bags and go off to goa and say okay this is you know i'll come back when the lockdown is over but you know i was really surprised and i think that was that was for me a big learning the kind of responsibility that everybody is showing to working from home the discipline the efficiency right the productivity is is phenomenal because uh, you you've cut out that that uh, that whole thing of uh, you know travel and and i think that's that's been great my second big learning has been actually a leadership lesson you know and i think what it's really helped me to get a perspective on seeing who are the big the, the true leaders in in the organization because this is a test of leadership right because you know being able to lead an organization uh, lead your group lead your office lead your uh, agency at this particular point in time with the sense of fortitude and a sense of direction actually sets you apart and you can you can actually see you know who are the guys who will uh, you know if you were to do a succession plan then you can clearly see your succession <laughs> plan in front of you saying here okay here are the guys that i think are ready right so to me that that's been a, a a great it's like trial by fire right so the people who walk through that you can see them and you can see them clearly so like like rohit mentioned the uh, lockdown is a true test of leadership and let's also hope that you know in the face of adversity we see better and more creative ideas emerge so thank you so much for joining all of uh, joining us it was great talking to all of you and uh, for the viewers i hope you can also join us back tomorrow uh, at the pitch brand talk virtual series which is uh, with mr tarun arora ceo of zaidus wellness thank you so much for joining thank, thank you, you guys thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you so much thank you. anita i must thank say you are exceptionally calm and still even at a time like this <laughs> <laughs> oh are there you two kids <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much anita